Welcome to our world news program. Today, we dive into the fascinating world of salt, a crucial component in our daily lives, found not just in our food but also in products like glass and plastics. Western Australia is leading the charge with a billion-dollar salt project that taps into solar evaporation, aiming to produce over 5 million tons by 2027. While there are environmental concerns, the project emphasizes sustainability and innovation in salt harvesting. Next, we turn our attention to Hong Kong, where Financial Secretary Paul Chan reassures that the city will maintain its unique characteristics under the One Country, Two Systems policy. Despite the challenges of rising poverty and income inequality, the sentiment among many is one of pride and resilience, especially with recent improvements in the stock market. The call for the government to enhance social welfare and support for senior citizens reflects a desire for a thriving future. Lastly, investors from Hong Kong are making waves in Japan's hotel market, with projections hitting a record 600 billion yen this year. Thanks to low interest rates and a booming tourism sector, hotel deals have skyrocketed. Notable investors are expanding their portfolios, taking advantage of Japan's recovering economy and rising wages. It's an exciting time for international investment in hospitality. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. Australian Broadcasting Corporation explores the critical role of salt in our daily lives, highlighting that it is not just a seasoning but a fundamental component in various products we use, from glassware to medical equipment. In 2023, Western Australia is set to produce around 12 million tons of salt, making it the largest producer in the country. The Marty Salt Project, a billion-dollar investment on the Pilbara coast, aims to harness the region's ideal climate for solar salt production, projected to yield over 5 million tons annually post-2027. This salt primarily serves industrial purposes, particularly in the manufacturing of PVC plastics, essential for clean technologies like solar panels and batteries. The natural process of solar salt mining, reliant on tides, sun, and wind, promises sustainability, with the potential for the project to last for generations, provided the lease is extended. South China Morning Post discusses the pride of Hong Kong as a Chinese city, emphasizing its unique attributes under the one country, two systems principle. Financial Secretary Paul Chan Mopa reassured that Hong Kong retains its distinct features, such as its legal system and free market policies. With recent security legislation enhancing safety, residents are encouraged to foster a resilient spirit to maintain Hong Kong's status as an international financial hub. Additionally, the article touches upon the positive economic signals, including a surge in the Hang Seng Index, reflecting a return of investor confidence and capital inflow from mainland China, bolstering the city's economic prospects despite global uncertainties. South China Morning Post also reports on the growing interest of Hong Kong investors in Japan's hotel market, driven by Japan's low interest rates and its appeal as a tourist destination. Anticipated investments in Japanese hotels are expected to reach a record high of 600 billion yen this year, with significant contributions from Hong Kong-based investors seeking diversification amid economic slowdowns and geopolitical tensions. The article highlights the Chiu family's investments in Japan's hospitality sector, noting their strategic acquisitions and the positive economic indicators in Japan, such as rising wages and increasing tourist numbers. This trend signifies a shift in investment strategies as Hong Kong investors look to capitalize on Japan's promising market while navigating local challenges. South China Morning Post During China's Golden Week National Day holiday, the property market in cities like Shenzhen experienced a remarkable surge in sales, attributed to recent stimulus measures from Beijing. The sales center of Golden Real Estate was bustling with eager homebuyers, celebrating their purchases by smashing golden eggs and receiving gifts from the developer. With total sales reaching approximately 300 million yuan in just one day, local governments in cities like Guangzhou, Shanghai, and Beijing relaxed restrictions on home purchases, further boosting buyer confidence. In Shenzhen, luxury properties also saw increased interest, with the Arcadia Bay project attracting numerous affluent buyers, signaling a revitalization in the market. Despite these promising developments, some economists remain cautious, emphasizing the need for more comprehensive solutions to address the ongoing challenges facing the property sector. South China Morning Post, in a significant advancement for China's semiconductor industry, the JFS Laboratory in Wuhan announced a breakthrough in silicon photonics, potentially paving the way for self-sufficiency in chip design amid ongoing U.S. sanctions. This achievement marks China's first successful integration of a laser light source with a silicon-based chip, addressing limitations in current chip technology. As global competitors invest heavily in silicon photonics, 
this technology is expected to revolutionize data processing and artificial intelligence. The market for silicon photonics chips is projected to grow substantially, offering China an opportunity to advance its semiconductor capabilities without reliance on high-end manufacturing equipment restricted by U.S. export controls. However, experts caution that translating these scientific breakthroughs into commercially viable products remains a significant challenge. South China Morning Post, TXYHI in Shanghai is redefining the shopping mall experience, positioning itself as a vibrant hub of youth culture amid the rise of e-commerce. This innovative retail space, formerly a department store, now showcases local fashion brands and offers a mix of nightclubs, restaurants, and exhibition areas. The mall's brand director, King Yip, emphasizes the shift in China's clothing industry towards homegrown design, providing a platform for young designers to reach consumers directly. With a focus on community engagement and local creativity, TXYHI features unique spaces like a pet-friendly outdoor terrace and a nightclub that caters to the LGBTQ community, creating an inclusive atmosphere for the city's youth. Drawing inspiration from global cultural hotspots, TXYHI aims to fill a void in Shanghai's retail landscape, making it a must-visit destination for trendsetters and creatives alike. South China Morning Post reports that a Royal New Zealand Navy vessel, the Manawanui, sank off the southern coast of Upolu, Samoa, while conducting a reef survey. Fortunately, all 75 crew members and passengers were safely rescued, thanks to swift action from local emergency services and the Royal New Zealand Air Force, which deployed a P-8A Poseidon aircraft for assistance. As the ship capsized and was submerged by 9 a.m. local time, the New Zealand Defence Force began investigating the cause of the grounding while also working to minimize environmental impacts. The vessel, which cost 103 million New Zealand dollars, was known for its specialized diving and hydrographic tasks across New Zealand and the Southwest Pacific, and its loss raises concerns about the operational capacity of the New Zealand Navy, which is already facing personnel shortages. South China Morning Post highlights China's impressive advancements in natural gas supply, positioning itself as a dominant player in the energy market. With significant investments and strategic partnerships, China is now the world's largest importer of liquefied natural gas, LNG, and has become the second-largest LNG reseller. Recent developments include the opening of a new LNG terminal in Guangdong and a five-year extension of a supply agreement with Total Energies. However, as China grapples with balancing its reliance on natural gas against its ambitious renewable energy goals, it faces a critical decision to continue expanding its gas infrastructure or pivot towards more renewable sources. The challenge lies in navigating the complexities of energy transition while ensuring that the growth of the gas sector does not hinder progress towards a greener future. CNN examines Hong Kong's plan to install thousands of surveillance cameras, a move that has sparked concerns about increased government monitoring in a city already wary of encroaching authoritarianism from mainland China. While the police assert that the cameras are essential for crime prevention, Critics argue that the introduction of facial recognition technology could lead to a more repressive surveillance state, reminiscent of practices in mainland China. The city, which has a relatively low number of cameras compared to its Chinese counterparts, faces a dilemma as it balances public safety with privacy rights amidst a backdrop of national security laws that have stifled dissent. Experts emphasize the need for clear regulations and transparency regarding the use of surveillance technology to prevent potential abuses of power as the presence of these cameras may alter residents' sense of freedom and security. South China Morning Post, a British man named Jack Fursdyke has unexpectedly garnered fame on the Chinese internet after sharing his grueling experience of the notorious 996 work culture at a Chinese tech company, NetEase. Fursdyke, who initially worked as a translator, transitioned to game design and soon found himself engulfed in a relentless schedule often clocking in 80-hour weeks to meet tight deadlines. His posts, particularly a weary photo on Xia Hongshu, resonated with many, quickly amassing over 265,000 views as he candidly questioned his job choice. Despite the demanding hours, Fursdyke expressed his passion for game design and acknowledged the better pay compared to the UK. However, he was eventually laid off amidst company downsizing, prompting reflections on the unsustainable nature of such work practices. He highlighted the long-term detrimental effects of the 996 culture on employee well-being and talent retention, noting that while some companies have begun to address excessive overtime, the competitive tech landscape continues to perpetuate these exhausting work schedules. Now residing in Harbin, Fursdyke is taking a break from the tech grind, focusing on social media content rather than rushing into another demanding job.
Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.